Joining us right now to talk more about that is former Reagan budget director David Stockman. David, good to see you. Good morning. You heard Sebastian yeah. Gorka earlier. This is a move to revitalize business. And you say? Well, he's a good talker, but he has no clue about economics, okay? This isn't going to revive any economy <clears throat> putting uh, tariffs on steel. On the other hand, we do have a giant trade problem, but let's look at steel. $29 billion a year is all we import. 25% tariff is seven billion dollars. It's a rounding era in a, error in a 20 trillion dollar economy. On the other hand, Trump has the problem uh, identified. He's just got the wrong solution. A country does not have an 800 billion deficit with the rest of the world. We export 1.6 trillion. We import 2.4 trillion. That isn't normal. We have had a trade deficit of large magnitude for 43 years in a row. Mm -hmm. 15 trillion of trade deficits since 1975. So we need to do something, but the problem isn't bad trade deals, it's bad money. In other words, our entire deficit is with 10 countries, China, Vietnam, Mexico, uh, Japan, South Korea, Germany, and a couple others, who I believe manipulate their currencies to low levels so that they can be competitive. And the problem is in the Fed that has kept interest rates so low that corporate America has been massively induced to buy back stock, do vanity M&A deals, do every kind of leverage recap imaginable, flush money into Wall Street, but it hasn't been investing in people and in, in jobs and in factories. Wait and a in second, production. you're saying the president is right on one on this on yeah. one level though that we've got this this deficit for 15 years, Dagan. That's one point that we've been trying to say. How important is trade surplus? How, uh, to, yeah. David, to that point, so we've run a trade deficit for 40 some odd years. Yeah. Even Ronald Reagan, I was reading an old speech he gave, trade deficits may be good for the United States. So to, to point that out, who are fans of Reagan. But how do you fix that? Will the Fed getting out of the way of the way markets operate in this country, will that help? Because again, some of the trade deficit is, much, much of it is related to how much we save as a nation. That's why Japan, runs a surplus the way it does. People save, and it's an insular country. If we don't will. save. We have the lowest savings rate right. in modern history. If the Fed would get out of the way, allow interest rates to normalize rapidly, if we would uh, get, take the CEOs of America to the woodshed, who are spending all of their cash flow, buying back their stock, goosing uh, their stock options, and get them refocused on building a business for the long run, I think we could work our way out of this hole. Now, you can have a trade deficit one year, five years, or short period of time, but when you go 43 years, 15 trillion worth of trade deficits, it's not a level no, but playing I, field. I, I look at the, if you look at that period of time in this country, I know I come from a place where the jobs did disappear and the prosperity right. did disappear. Manufacturing, it was a textile job and furniture manufacturing and the like. However, broadly speaking, if you look at the country, has it really been that lousy over 40 years? Yes, because it has. It, our, our economic growth rate has been declining by the decade. It used to be 3%. After the turn of the century, it was 2%. Since 2007, the last 10 years, it's been 1.3% real GDP growth, the lowest in history, one-third of what we've done historically. We've offshored massive amounts of... But that has to do with the regulatory capture. I, I have to push back on this because if you look at what's happened, it's gone from the corporation's coffers to the government coffers because if you look at Dodd-Frank, what happened with that, Sarbanes-Oxley, I mean, we, we have had an issue. It just doesn't have to do with trade, and I have to say that the, you the agree with the president on this. Well, well, I, I well, agree well, with him on ha, trade. I've, not, I've not seen David Stockman agree with President Trump at all. <laughs> you agree with President well, well, Trump on this? I agree with him on the problem, which is massive. I disagree that 17th century mercantilism, which is really what he talks, uh, and tariffs and taking one commodity at a time is going to solve the problem. Yeah. He got bad advice from Gary Cohn. I say hallelujah. The Goldman Sachs Regency <laughs> at the White House so you're is glad over. Gary Cohn's leaving. Yeah, I'm glad he's leaving. He gave him bad trade advice. He gave him bad advice about the Fed. We needed a house cleaning, and he put in Janet Yellen with trousers and a tie. Uh, we needed to have, with the corporate tax cut. But, everybody, but, we're, well, but we're a services economy. I mean, the situation we're talking about, uh, steel and aluminum, I mean, 70% of our economy is services. It's the, the steel and aluminum tariff 
is actually impacting us. And, and those are higher, better quality paying jobs. And what so, are we supposed to do about an $800 correct. billion dollar deficit for all of these years? Well, th this, Every year, rather. You're going to have a deficit when you have a comparative advantage in services. That's, that's, that's the free market argument. And I am a free market guy from day one. But when you have bad money, free markets don't work. When you have the central banks of the world distorting the entire trading system, keeping their exchange rates low, we end up importing labor from China that could be done here. But the problem is you have to go to the central banks. You have to go to the monetary system. What's the answer if not these tariffs? The answer is to raise the interest rate rapidly to 3 That's or 4%. That's not the president's domain. He could t That's the Fed. Are you listening, Jay Powell? Yes. What should the president do? He should be calling in the Fed and say, let's get back to a normal monetary policy. He can't dictate the Fed. That's yeah, the Fed's supposed to be independent. Yeah. What's the president should do? He What's your answer? He can very easily dictate the Fed. He oh, give me a break. God. And then he'll be criticized for dictating well, uh, the Fed. You know, but the, if the problem is not in the USTR, the Commerce Department, the problem isn't dumb, stupid trade negotiators. The problem is stupid monetary policy, and they need to have a meeting of the minds because corporate Look, America... Look, you were against the tax cut plan. Now we're absolutely. talking about 3.5% growth. I mean, come on. We're not getting 3.5% growth. If we if we get 2% this quarter, we'll be lucky. We're late in this business cycle. We saw this morning $155 billion of stock buybacks announced in February alone. We're at an $800 billion stock buyback rate. We're having stupid M&A deals everywhere, trillions of them. They shrink jobs. They shrink they they're not economy. going to Ireland. <laughs> well, they're doing and, deals in the U.S. They're not taking but, their businesses Maria, and going to no, Ireland. No one was ever taking jobs to, uh, to Ireland. They, they were, were too. They, they were going were taking, and going doing deals so that they were, could get a lower tax rate. They were just taking the corporate headquarters and 16 people to right, Ireland. Right, but they changed their tax rate. Yeah, but it, yeah, but that's a matter of revenue. That's not a matter of production and jobs and growth. In other words, we sent IBM sent 130,000 people to India because of low labor costs and not because of the tax well, regime. What's more destructive? Run in annual trade deficits or a national debt that's double? Both of them. Both of them are, are they bad. equally destructive? They're equally destructive, and we got a whopping national debt of $1.2 trillion, a deficit, $22 trillion of debt, and we've got $800 billion this year of a trade deficit that we can't afford. Hey, you, you didn't like the spending in the Reagan White House. You left. Yeah. You, know, you know what Gary Cohen's going through. <laughs> yeah, you said, I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm out of here. And you well, left the Reagan well, just left, the way I Gary left, Cohen's doing. Yes, I left for the, uh, the good reason. He left for a bad reason, okay? His bad reason was that he was not able to convince Trump, yes, you're right on trade, but let's go a different direction. Let's clean house at the Fed. He didn't know that. You know why? Because Goldman Sachs loves what the Fed is doing. Well, Goldman Sachs loves a corporate tax cut that is leading to 800 billion of stock buybacks, goosing stock prices. Their trading desk huh. at Goldman Sachs has had the busiest two months in its history wow. in terms of stock buybacks. Well, look, Lloyd Blankfein tweeted out, I'm sorry to see Gary Cohn leave. He did. Yeah. I was like, you're not really helping. No, he's, uh, he, that's what he tweeted out this morning.